We're going to dive into something that is a problem, was a problem before this pandemic and has now ramped up to the new level. And that is the spread of misinformation and fake news in the time of COVID-19. Turns out there's some tech companies like WhatsApp that are trying to slow the spread of fake news, fake treatments uh, and remedies. And they're doing so by only limiting the forwarding of highly forwarded messages to one per chat. So ladies, is this enough? Does more need to be done to stop the spread of fake news? I Listen, I, I appreciate the effort, I guess. It's one thing to change technology. It's another to change human behavior. If there is an aunt or an uncle or a relative, I think we've all gotten like a random bonkers message from a friend or family member about some conspiracy or the other. Um, and, you know, you kind of like shake your head and, and move on. But that person is forwarding it to you because clearly they believe it. So to me, the focus shouldn't be on what the technology companies are doing to stop this, but how are we having conversations with the people who are actually hitting send? I was walking the dogs the other day. I overheard a conversation between two people. They were physically distanced, and one dude was telling this lady about a conspiracy theory about how the virus was created in a lab by Americans to limit our freedom. And they were discussing them. They were discussing that this was a possibility and the one dude really believed it. So if there's someone like that in your life, never mind what you're going to do on your device and deleting links, what are you going to say to that person? Are you going to say, what are you talking about? This is so stupid. This is bonkers. Are you going to like, or are you going to be patient and, and like take two hours to telling them about science and research and how this is wrong? Like, I think that to me is more important. I'd rather spend time discussing and sharing ideas and ways and how to like, you know, address the human behavior behind these forwarding tech uh, techniques. I completely agree with you, Lainey, and I've heard the lab scenario, but I've also heard this scenario from family members and a, and a lot of people. When this pandemic first started, a lot of Black people just figured it didn't impact the Black community because the news reports were primarily reporting, you know, we saw white faces. And so a lot of Black people thought, hey, this isn't affecting us or impacting us. And this, of course, is outside of China. Um, it, it, it's very, very interesting because that clearly is not the case. But still, you know, two days ago I heard, well, we have antibodies that combat that. That is not the case. Take Michigan, for example. 14% of the population in that state is black. Black people account for 33% of the cases and 40% of the deaths. So I was looking at what we're doing here in Canada, and Canada isn't collecting um, what, it, what they call disaggregated uh, data, meaning racial or ethnic data. And a lot of experts are saying, you know what, that's not really a good thing to do because it means that the data is colorblind and we aren't able to really look at data that helps us um, help uh, communities that are being impacted by this at a greater level. So colorblind data here and then color not being completely seen everywhere else. A lot of fake news. Yeah, and what you're saying is true. The fake news, though, is not just being spread, of course, by WhatsApp. It's a drop in the bucket when you think about, like, what Twitter does, what Facebook does, what even YouTube videos that get forwarded via, via email can do. And I just feel like... Right now, uh, this misinformation is everywhere, and we should all be very frightened because what I'm hearing about more and more is that journalists from respected news organizations, Torstar is one of them, um, they're letting people go because they've lost ad revenue. So there's this really interesting um, and you know terrifying scenario happening where you've got less and less um, credible journalists maybe being gainfully employed, and more and more of the spread of this misinformation. I have some, uh, I'll just say this but personally. But what happens? Like, I have some people, oh, yeah, go. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you're absolutely right, Sim, but what happens if the misinformation is coming from people who you are supposed to be trusting? And we've all said it on the show, and we should continue to say it, that the only people we should be listening to are the scientists and the doctors and the infectious diseases experts and the public health officials. But a lot of that information, at least south of the border to us, is being spread 
by the guy right at the top. And I say as a perfect example, his pushing of an untested drug to treat coronavirus. And so it's very hard to tackle people on the ground when they are sometimes just regurgitating something that the president of the United States has said. Don't you guys find that in our little social media worlds, we kind of live in like an echo chamber so that we're just, if, if you're following the doctors, if you're following journalists, you're getting that one side. So it's easy to forget that conspiracy theories, at least for me, because I'm not hearing them from family members or friends. But then you will, like, maybe you'll click on a troll's profile and then, oh my goodness, you know, half an hour later, you've gone down a wormhole and you find out that tens of thousands of people believe that the Earth's position in the universe right now is triggered like a massive photon wave particle collision that caused COVID-19. And with love and light, you can defeat it, but only if you gather around and meditate on April 7th at 415. Like, I have found this stuff up. And it is, this kind of stuff has always frightened me. You guys know that about me, this level of ignorance. But I'm actually not surprised because throughout history, anytime there has been... Um, Anytime there has been an outbreak, a war, a plague, any time that has sort of tried humanity, this stuff always bubbles right up to the surface. Superstitions, racism, fanaticisms, they, they cause literal dark ages. You know, hopefully, they're generally followed by a period of light. So fingers crossed, because it's madness. 